Sidewalks in Cana by Pearl Moore. Act 1, Scene 1. We hear, and the Oscar for Best Actress goes to Opal Bailey. Enter Opal Bailey. She wears a designer gown and holds on to her Oscar. You can hear loud applause. Wow. Wow is about all I can say. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> Mama, this one's for you. I know you haven't seen the movie. In her own words, she didn't want to see her daughter curse out a handsome man like yourself, Paul. <laughs> or naked. She definitely didn't want to see that. But that's what R-rated movies are for. And it's not like she hasn't seen me naked. <laughs> Audience laughs. See, Mama, they get it. Everyone just loves boobs. <laughs> Tip sell. <laughs> Seriously, though, Mama. I hope that just this once, you and Daddy are proud. I know I don't... My family is nuts. No, really, I don't know why I'm even trying to talk to them. They'd be in bed by now. Well, knowing that, I guess I can say what I want to. But first, let me get all the thank yous out of the way. Thank you to my beautiful cast and crew. Without you, there would be no movie. And to my lovely director, Annie. I love you with all my whole heart. Music starts. Thanks for the challenge and the dedication on this film. If you don't win Best Director, they can kiss our asses and you can have my Oscar. And lastly, to my sleeping family, fuck you. Scene two. We open to the inside of Bailey Service Station. On the window panel out front, there are a few notable attractions like the best bologna sandwiches in Cana, Virginia. Below that, scratched out, it reads, Home of Opal Bailey. Another sign has an arrow that points to Dodie's hair salon and tanning bed. The inside of the store is losing its shine. Tiles are cracking and the shelves filled with an assortment of candies and snacks are dusty. In a display case, there are baskets of local produce and there a little waiting area with two chairs beside the glass door, the only entrance to the store. There is a wooden counter that has an old register and a small basket of moon pies and cowtails on it. On the wall, there is a plethora of family photographs. Behind the counter, in an old leather black chair sits Amos Bailey, who is sleeping like a log. He's wearing his mechanic's outfit and has, that has grease all over it and an Atlanta Braves baseball cap. Enter Quinn. She's dressed casually with her laptop bag strapped across her, and she carries a notebook, her phone, and a pen. She sets off the store bell when she enters, but Amos's eyes remain shut. Quinn isn't sure whether to wake him or not, so she just stands there in the middle of the store, staring at Amos. It's rude to stare, you know. Aren't you supposed to greet the customers? Hi. What do you want? Hi. You weren't really asleep? Yeah, I was till you came in. Oh, I'm sorry to disturb your nap. Yeah, I can't do much napping these days anyway. Can I help you with anything? My hat. Yeah. I like wearing it when they're winning. I don't know why I'm wearing it now. <laughs> <laughs> what can I help you with? Oh, uh, the sign outside on the window says you have the best bologna sandwiches in Cana. Yeah, I told Dodie we needed to get that scratched off that sign. Oh, you don't sell it then? We stopped selling it a couple of months ago. Oh, well, I was really looking forward to having a sandwich. I got cheese. Just cheese? No bread? I got crackers. Okay, um, I guess I'll take what I can get. I'll be right back with it. Amos exits to the back of the store. Quinn waits a second, but then goes behind the counter to look at the photographs that cover the walls. She takes pictures of the wall with her phone and comes out from behind the counter. Amos enters with a styrofoam bowl full of an oversized piece of cheese and a bunch of salty and crackers. Here you go. 
Will that be all for you? Do you have sugar to go with this? Oh, oh, all right. Who are you? What? But no one ever asks for sugar with their cheese and crackers unless they've read that godforsaken book. Who the hell are you? I no one. I, I swear. I don't want anything but the cheese and- Look, look, I, I'm going to ask you one more time because you seem like a smart girl. Who are you and what do you want? My name is Quinn, and I swear, I only came in Tell to- me Pulled the out truth. a baseball bat from under the counter and pointed at Quinn. Tell me the truth. I just wanted a snack. Who are you with? NBC, ABC, Fox News, New York Times, NPR, BBC? Are you serious? I just wanted some cheese and crackers, not my head bashed in. You're on my property. I have a bunch of friends with the Carroll County Police, so this could be over before you know it, and no one would know. What the hell? What happened to Southern Hospitality? Gone, gone. Now get out of my store. My name is Quinn Adler, and I am a reporter, well, freelance reporter. I'm trying to find out what happened to your daughter. Get out of here. I want to know the cause of her death like everyone else. Can you put down the bat, please? Get out. I just have a few questions. Get out. Jody enters. She's wearing a smock with chips, with clips and scissors in the pocket. (sighs) What the shit is going on? Amos, what in the world are you doing? Another reporter, Jody. I told you they would never leave. Never, ever leave us alone. I swear, I'm not like the others. Amos Bailey, you put down that baseball bat right now. Dodie, we got to send him a message. Not by killing him. Amos, have you lost your mind? I didn't mean to upset you. I swear, I'm on your side. That's what they all say. (laughs) Then they twist our words around and and make a fool out of us. Amos, just please drop the bat and let the poor girl go. We aren't going to scare off anyone, Dodie, if we don't try to protect ourselves. That ain't the way you need to go about it. You know it. Now give me that bat before you hurt yourself. I ain't gonna hurt myself. You barely hurt anyone in your life. What makes you think you're gonna do start now? Hand it over. Now, Amos. We're only gonna get more of them leeches like her around here. She came here wanting cheese and crackers with sugar. Amos hands Dodie the bat. You've read Opal's book, then. I've read it six times. Why would you read that trash six times? It's It's not not all all trash, trash, Amos. Research. Research? On who? Her or us? Both. Oh, yeah, right. I've traveled here to get both sides of the story, which I think the media tends to forget about. They pick a side too quickly when only one person is giving out the so-called facts. So you've come to help us. Oh, please, Dodie. Don't tell me you were thinking about listening to this. I think I want to hear what she has to say, Amos. Is that okay with you? Dodie, come on now. Don't try and use that bat on me. I said, is that all right? Fine, fine. Go ahead. Tell some more secrets about all of us. Trust me. That's kind of hard to do when you got a baseball bat aimed at me, Dodie. Just sit down and... Take a nap while you're at it. Just what are you smiling at? Oh, I'm sorry. It's just that it's silly, really. Nothing of importance. Where are you from? Does it matter? Well, you're not from here. We don't just open ourselves up to strangers. My name is Quinn Adler, and I live in California. And you came out all this way to talk to us. That's the goal. Who do you work for? I'm kind of a freelance reporter for arts and entertainment. Kind of? It's just that I'm trying to make it big and get a shot at doing actual stories. But right now, I'm just an intern. They said if I find something big or something worthwhile for a story, I might finally be a part of the team. Are you one of them unpaid intern types? Well, yes. Well, let me get this straight. You are an unpaid intern, and you got on a plane that costs money. 
got a rental car that costs some more money. And then you got yourself in a hotel, which costs even more money. How are you affording all this? You must be desperate for a promotion. It's not the only job that I have. I have three other jobs, which helped me get here. Three jobs? Well, it's expensive to live in California, you know. So I work as a photographer, a dog walker, and as a waitress, too. How do you keep everything straight? I guess I'm adjusted to it now. And you saved your money to come visit little old Cana, Virginia? I planned and planned. I knew that there would be a huge wave of reporters here for a few weeks, so I waited for the news to die down a bit. It hadn't died down. If anything, those vultures keep finding out more information and keep coming back. Well, I'm not like them. You don't have to tell me anything that you don't want me to talk about. We don't want to talk about anything. I just think that you aren't being recognized the way you should be. The media is pinning you in this place as the bad guys. I only want to help, I promise. That's what they all said. But you saw what happened during our press conference. They tore us a new one. But that wasn't a sit-down interview like what I'm asking for, and I would be sure that you would know everything that I document. Yeah, right. I'm being serious. We've heard it all before, haven't we, Dodie? We have indeed, Amos. Listen, I came here to help you. If you don't do something soon, your reputation will be ruined, and you'll let Opal win this whole thing. Don't you say her name. She hasn't won anything, seeing as she's dead and gone. Especially since she decided she'd end the problem herself. I don't see that as winning at all. I'm sorry. I should have said my condolences before this conversation even started. Condolences? We never even went to her funeral. We weren't invited. Did you know that? So don't share your condolences because we don't need them. Because she didn't need us. Surely you don't think that. Cowardice is what she done did. What? Why do you think that way? Why? Do you think we're bad, horrible, awful people like the news does? Well, of course not, but she was troubled. Oh, there you go. See, taking her side. They always do. I'm not. I just don't understand how you could say something like that about your daughter. Daughter? Opal was your daughter. Opal was my daughter. But then she changed. She left and never came back. And then she wrote this untruthful book. And, and then she goes and kills herself, leaving us with a mess to clean up after. Amos, please. We've talked about this. What? Now you want to talk to her and treat her like, like a hero? Just like those reporters? Not even thinking about the little man. I'm just saying. I don't want to hear it. I'm going to go check on the garage and check on Harley, and hopefully by the time I'm back, she'll be gone. I don't reckon he offered you a drink or anything. Dodie, I am so sorry. I didn't mean to come in and stir anything. It's not you. It's been hard for all of us. You've really read her book six times. It'll be my seventh time reading it if I finish it today. Why do you keep on reading it? To make sure I haven't missed anything. Like what? To make sure the stories line up, what's true and isn't. You don't believe her? I believe some of it, but she exaggerated a bit. Exaggerated? <laughs> That's the understatement of the year. Let me help you. I don't think Amos would like that. This could be totally up to you to decide. He's my husband. I want his support. It's not that I don't want to talk about it. She wrote her pain and our own, and it, and it was too close to home for him. Yeah, I read that. No, you didn't see it. Right. Listen, I should tell you, Harley enters wearing a mechanic's uniform. His hands are covered in grease and his face is too. He's sweating bullets and his zipper fly is open. What has got Pops in such a pissy state? Uh, 
Howdy there. <laughs> Can't be this beautiful lady that's put him in such a state. This is Quinn. She's a reporter, hoping to hear our side You're of the story. You're far too pretty to be a reporter. Being pretty has nothing to do with my job. Well, you gotta look pretty for the camera. I'm not that type of reporter just yet. Slow your roll there, Casanova. She didn't come here to flirt with you, Harley. Well, I gotta put myself out there, Nanny. You really don't. So, you wanna interview me? You can sit down with me any day and talk. Thank you, but I think I'm going to stick with the people who were important to her story. You were hardly mentioned. It's Harley, right? Yeah, she only wrote about you a handful of times, and honestly, I'm starting to see what she means about you compensating for something. Hey, I ain't compensating for nothing. Listen, I can only be here for three days. It's all I can afford, and my editor is going to kill me if I'm not back with a story for her. I have to get this story, whether it be from you or your next-door neighbors. Please, just give me a chance. I'm staying at a hotel down in Mount Airy, but if you are ready to talk, here is my number and email. Then hands her her business card and exits. You should let me have her number, Nanny. Zip your mouth, Harley. And your fly. Well, Papa ain't gonna like it, you taking her number. You're not going to tell Papa anything, Harley. Just, this none of your business. She was my family, you too, too, you know. But she didn't quite spill all your secrets, did she, Harley? No. Then you keep your big mouth shut. And you won't have any of your secrets fall out into the uh, public eye. What makes you think that I have some huge secret? Opal didn't find out about yours or she would have written them down. Everybody's got something worth hiding. I'm going back to the garage. Dodie sighs and takes a look at the card in her hand. Lights up on Opal. She's waiting to be interviewed about her book. She's talking to someone we can't see. Do you think they read it? God, I bet they all hated it. Oh, there's a little part of me that knows my sister Birdie enjoyed it a little. She always was an attention whore. My brother will, though. No telling. And Daddy will definitely hate it. But Mama, well, she'll be disappointed, as usual. I signed all their copies with a little kiss right beside their chapters. I know I'm petty, but it feels good to get it all off my chest, you know? Can I have a drink? It would just ease my nerves. Hey, Annie, why don't we go get a pizza after this? I'm starving. Scene three. It's the next day. Quinn waits outside. She's been, she's been there for some time. She has Opal's novel, posted, posted taps scattered throughout. Quinn shuts the book and pulls out her cell phone, clicks through a few things, then dials a number. She gets the voicemail. Hey, it's Quinn. I saw you called. Several times. I know that I haven't been in touch for a while. I'm sorry. It's a beautiful Sunday morning here, and I'm sure you're sleeping right now. So I know you're going to be upset that you didn't pick up when I called. Don't be. Please. Like... I'm okay. Really. I just... You know, sometimes it's hard to breathe and I need to step back for a bit. I know you're wondering what I'm up to, but I'm fine. You don't need to worry. Like, seriously, I'm okay. I know I freaked you out a bit, but... Enter Will Bailey. He's wearing his nice... His nicest suit from church service this morning, and Harley is with him in his own suit. I'll talk to you later. Uh, I gotta go. Hello. Hi there. Quinn, right? He reaches his hand out for her to shake. I'm Will Bailey. Opal's brother. Right. 
you know your stuff you've you read the book five times actually seven times now i finished it while sitting here speaking of which why aren't they here i don't even know what the store hours are they definitely aren't online so i just have to guess i take it they don't have a church where you're from oh i, I didn't realize maybe next time you can join us if you're still here that is i don't do church ah well you didn't grow up in the bible belt from what i understand can't say i did well our doors are always open right how long are you going to be here i have two days left sorry boys it looks like i won't be attending church anytime soon what a shame you could have sat right beside me sweetheart Will slaps the back of Harley's head. Ow! Don't call me that. What Harley means to tell you is my parents are going to be hard to get anything out of them. They've had a lot happen to them recently. They're not the only ones who have had something happen to them. You have your own chapter, don't you, Will? Miss Quinn, I didn't come here to be interviewed by... Uh, she had I... quite a bit to say about you, didn't she? No comment. We should head out, Harley. I just came to tell you, Miss Quinn, you're going to be waiting all night if you're wanting to see him today. Yes, thank you. I realize that now. My parents weren't about to come here to tell you. I suspect they would have left you here all day till you got the poem. Well, at least it gave me a chance to talk to you. Seems it has. But I'm afraid the Harley and I have to meet my parents for supper. I assume it would be rude of me to invite myself to dinner. It's called supper, and yes, it would. We don't take kindly to peppermint patties in my family. Peppermint patties? You know, those little comic strips of the peanuts? Well, Peppermint Patty is always inviting herself over to Charlie Brown's, but Charlie Brown didn't say nothing about her wanting her there, so there you have it. <laughs> How was that not in the book? Well, there's a lot missing from that book of yours. Miss Quinn, my family doesn't want to talk about it. Well, maybe you do then. Or Harley. No, we don't. You you have a nice day. She Ms. said Quinn. that I... you called her. You missed her. Goodbye, Miss Quinn. She wrote good things, too. You all seem to forget about that. Yeah, but she messed up big time writing all that shit. About... Harley. Well, she did. Everything shit around here, and y'all pretend like it's nothing. It's ruined Papa and Nanny's business, and even your church. Y Y'all think people aren't saying nothing about us, but they are. That's all they talk about. That's all they want to talk about. That's all there is to talk about. Get in the car, Harley. Why can't we ever talk about it? I said get in the car, Harley. Don't make me say it again. Harley exits. You won't have a hard time getting my son to talk, but he don't have a clue about the consequences of his motor mouth. So I'd appreciate if you didn't talk to him. He's the only one willing to talk about it. He's trying to... Confess his sins. Surely you understand that, Pastor. I'd hardly call being the flirt of the town a sin, but you won't get anywhere acting like that when you don't know the half of it. That's what I'm trying to do. I understand the family's cautious behavior towards me, but I'm not a threat until you make me one. That's not very friendly. I didn't come here to make friends. I just want to know the real story. The real story? Opal's dead, but she left us this glorious book for everyone to read, and she didn't even think about what it would do to us. But she asked you about it. What? No, she... She, she did. Page 53. Quinn pulls the book out and reads. As she does, Opal appears. I asked Will what would happen if I wrote a book about the family. About everything that's happened. It was one of those days that he rang me up every so often. I guess he thought it'd be a good idea to get on God's good side. Just stop. A lot of times I believe my brother thought of it as a sin not to communicate with me or forget about me. Or maybe my brother actually missed me. Never could tell with him. I remember what he said. Opal disappears. I know what I said and I know what she said back to me. Then why won't you talk to me? It seems you wanted the book to happen as badly as her. I'm done. We're, we're done talking. I guess I'll just talk to your wife then. Or, uh, is it your ex-wife now? Excuse me? Or maybe I'll talk to your sister. 
Opal's dead. The other one. Birdie's nuts. You're, you're going to talk to Birdie? She seems to be very willing to talk about everything. Birdie's nuts. Well, that's not very nice, Pastor. She just wants attention. Maybe, but at least she's willing to tell me something. This whole community seems to be willing to talk to me about anything I ask. They don't know anything, Miss Quinn. You and I both know that. You're right. But every rumor starts from a grain of truth before it gets twisted up. What do you want from me? Opal's book told me a lot about each of you, and if there's anyone that can change their mind about talking to me, it's you. And if I don't? Birdie seems like she's interested in an interview with me, but I think the bigger story would be from your wife. Connie wouldn't talk to you. I won't know that till I visit the jail. You don't know which one she's even in. Do you even know which one she's in? You're an intern. That's what my mama said. You'd be doing bigger stories than the ones in Cana, Virginia. Why this one? This one seems fun. Could be the breakthrough I was looking for. So you'll talk to them? Don't tell Harley you've been talking to his mama. Will exits. Lights up on Opal. She's on the phone, and she's got a mason jar half full of moonshine in one hand. Will, please calm down. I didn't know. I I thought everyone knew. It's not like she was keeping it a secret. It's not like you were keeping it a secret. Everyone in Cana knew exactly what she was doing, but nobody was stopping her. Will, please, please don't raise your voice at me. You sound like Mama. Well, I didn't know it would get you in trouble with the IRS. I didn't. How much do you need? I, I, can, I can get it for you. Please, just let me help you out. Will, please. Young up the bastard. Shit, 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 shit. Lights up inside the store. Each member of the family is here. Dodie, Amos, Will, Harley, and now Bertie. I ain't talking to her. We should talk to her. She could be the change we need in this family. What in the world did she say to you? Mama, she didn't say anything to me. She didn't say anything to you, really? Then why in the world is Bertie here for? I thought we agreed she couldn't keep her mouth shut. I'm still a part of this family. Hell, I'm her sister too. Her only sister? And I'm her only brother, so what's your point? Y'all can't keep on excluding me. Every time we include you, your big mouth goes running off to the nearest paparazzi. Well, you aren't using this attention for your benefit. We could be making a profit off all this. Get more tourists around here. Keep our business afloat. It'd be good for our community. I'm just thinking like Daddy would. I've told you before, Bertie, that ain't right. No matter what Opal has said about us and what she did to our privacy, we aren't using her death as a means to make a living. But Daddy, it could be a way to remember her. Remember her? She's not a hero, Bertie. This is, this is why we need to clear our names. I, I'm not suggesting what Bertie is, but we should try and shape our public image. But she didn't just put the family's name. Didn't she put that woman in it? Oh. What was her name? Mary June Jones. Yeah, yeah, Mary June Jones. Well, Opal put her in the book, didn't she? <laughs> well, that's because Mary June Jones is dead and had no family, so there was no worry that Mary June Jones would sue Opal for slander. And she didn't think we wouldn't. Well, Amos, we didn't file a case. Well, if anyone cares about it, uh, my lawyers are working on it, and they say y'all are crazy not to get some lawyers on this case. Bertie, no one cares that you shacked up with old Clarence Edwards. Hell, you don't even have a case, because if Opal told the 100% truth about anyone, it was you. Well, she didn't put it in a nice way. To be fair, Bertie, there is no nice way of talking about an affair or a divorce. Well, it wasn't easy to go through, either. It's not supposed to be, Bertie. Can't help that he didn't give me what I needed in the bedroom. For the love of God, stop. 
Sorry, Harley. The point is, Birdie, you're just doing this for the money and the fame. I'm telling y'all, you ain't using this media to your advantage. Birdie, why would we want to use our sister's death to our advantage? Now, Will Bailey, you know that's not what I meant. Oh, you didn't? Is that why I hear you're trying to set up an interview with the reporter girl? Well, she's going to find out something. She was going around town asking anyone what they knew. Hell, I just told her so that she wouldn't go asking for an interview with Connie. She wants to interview my mama? Thanks a lot, Birdie. Now I understand why Birdie is here. You want to make sure that we said yes to the interview. You're afraid that girl is going to talk to your wife. Wait, you knew she was planning on going to talk to Mama? Yes. Why didn't you tell me? Because I didn't want you to get upset. Why would I get upset? I know how you get when you talk about your Mama. How I, I get? It's more about how you get anytime I bring up Mama. You don't want to talk about it with me, but you sure do talk to God about it a lot. It's not the easiest thing to talk about, Harley. Oh, it's not like she was selling drugs, Will, or murdering people. You stay out of it. Well, excuse me, I just think the poor boy should be allowed to talk about his mama. Forget it. I'm done. Whatever y'all... Y'all do whatever you want. It's clear no one wants to talk to me about what edit, whatever happens in this family. I got work to do. Now I suggest y'all go somewhere else and discuss this. Quinn enters. Shit. Well, good morning to you too, Amos. Have you been waiting out there all this time? Yeah, well, I figured since Harley left, your little family meeting it might be over with. Unbelievable. Hi there, honey. I'm Bertie. You and I chatted on the phone for just a I second. know who you are, Bertie. So, you been blackmailing my son then? It's more of an incentive for you all to talk to me. It's a dirty trick. I wouldn't think of it that way, Dodie, because there are plenty of dirty, there's plenty of dirty stuff this family has done. Shall I, uh, turn to a page and share? I don't think that's necessary. Well, good then. I didn't come here to blackmail or do whatever hellish thing you think I'm trying to do. You know what the media is portraying you all as. Hillbillies, rednecks, the stuff of nightmares for the South to be pinned down as. I know that's not the case, but you all aren't making a case at all for yourself. You'll let her win and whatever she said in the book will be the truth. It'll be the scripture of Opal Bailey. She's not God. Never said she was but you're letting her be. So can I get my interview now? Let's put it to a vote. All in favor. Majority wins. I ain't talking to her. You're acting like a child. Just sit down, shut up, and let the adults handle it. Are you gonna record this? If that's okay. Oh, Lord, can I fix my hair first? Lights up on Opal. You know, one of the first things I was told as an actress? That I would never make it because of the way I sound. One agent told me straight to my face that I sounded like a hick and I wouldn't get any job sounding like that. He was right. Every time I walked in for an audition, I would feel so confident walking into the room, but as soon as I opened my mouth to talk, I'd lose the job. I had to take a class to get rid of it. Hell, I even hired a speech coach to help me. It was like letting a piece of me go. I was on the phone with my mama and I remember how she cried at the way I said, y'all. She said I was given into their ways. I'm not though. Hollywood's take on Southerners drives me up a wall. It's heinous. They think that our veins are pumping sweet tea and diabetes. They think our accents are something to poke fun at. They think we're dumb. They think we're uneducated. We're on drugs. We're born from incest. We're poor as dirt. <laughs> Little do they know, I know at least a handful of millionaires where I'm from. 
They might not look like it because they wear wife beaters, baseball caps, denim and boots instead of Gucci or Ralph Lauren. They probably look more like white trash in their eyes. Really, we're made of back roads, folklore, stories, rumors, <laughs> bluegrass, traditions, stars, and biscuits. I miss my mama's biscuits. Lights back up on the family. Dodie and Bertie have gotten themselves camera ready. Amos and Will haven't changed at all. In fact, Amos sits back in the chair behind the counter, pretending to sleep through, through the chaos. Quinn has her camera and notebook ready to go for the interview. All right, can we please get started now? I'm about to fall asleep like Dad. Oh, quit your whining. You're getting what you wanted. I'm hitting the record button, and here we go. Why aren't there customers here? That's the first question you want to ask? Really? Nothing about us or... Or it's me. an honest question. I haven't seen anyone but family show up to this little shop. It's a service station. We, we only fix cars and sell a bag of chips every once in a blue moon. So why aren't there people here? Opal described this place as a hangout of misfits and catbirds. Perhaps it would be helpful for our viewers to know some of the terms that Opal used. Like, oh, what is a catbird? A catbird is a person that you can never forget after meeting them one time. As for the decline in customers, that's all thanks to Opal. Because of her remarks about her father or you, Dodie? Amos will never admit to it, so I guess I'll take the blame. Now, Dodie, we've talked about this. I thought you were asleep. I know what you're doing, and it's not going to work. I ain't doing nothing. I was just telling the young girl the truth. Well, stop dragging me into it. If you would stop gambling, I would. Cody, come on. You are giving her exactly what she and those other news folk want. So this is true, that Amos has a lot of debt because of his gambling. <laughs> Why do you think we aren't retired? Now, wait just a second. It ain't all my fault. I still have customers, unlike some people here, because they don't think I'm going to go out and tell every soul I meet about what Ollie McDonald and Clevis Hawks did last week in church. That's new information, what they do. See, don't you understand? It's all her and her big old mouth. Well, now, Daddy, I haven't heard either about Ollie McDonald or Clevis Hawks. What did they do? They didn't do anything. If they didn't do anything, then why are you talking about them? Amos, you aren't making much sense. Ollie McDonald and Plebus Hawks barely know each other. Honey, that ain't the point I'm trying to make. Then I what are you trying to lie. say? Dodie, you run a full-time rumor mill here at the store and your beauty shop, and you know it. Hell, everyone knows it now. Is that true, Dodie? I don't gossip. It's ugly. Mama. What? Birdie and I are just remembering certain times when you were acting ugly. Mama, what about the time Tina Hyatt confided in you about her daughter sleeping with Curtis Leftwich's boy and you went and told Curtis's wife? That wasn't in Opal's book. It was when Opal left for California. Oh, and what about the time that Adeline Roberts came into your shop blubbering about how she caught her husband cheating on her with another man? After she left, you made sure to tell everyone that walked into your beauty shop about it. I think Opal was here for that one. Oh, is that the one where her husband found out that Dodie had spread his business everywhere and then took the man he was sleeping with to church with him that Sunday? And then he went to testify up in front of God and told everyone that he was, in fact, sleeping with a man and wanted everyone in town to know it? Bingo! I own a beauty shop. I can't help what comes out of people's mouths. Oh, but you don't deny that story and others in Opal's book. There are some things that are true. That story, though, I am downright ashamed of myself for it. It is true. Do you not feel bad about any of the others? No. You just said you were ashamed of... Now, I might have said I was ashamed of that one, and I am. But you know what? 
I ain't the first person they hear it from. And I won't be the last. If I know, then people like Mary June Jones or Suzanne Lisa Vernon already know. And they told about 10 people already. The thing of it is, I always tell everyone I tell about this stuff not to say anything to anybody. Do they listen to me? No, they sure don't. I just want to be nosy. An eavesdropper? I want to be informed. More like misinformed. Oh, and you think your hands are clean, Amos. <laughs> They're the dirtiest among us all. Oh, no, sir, you are not pulling me into this. I'm going <laughs> back to napping. <laughs> Do not disturb. Quinn, turn to page 88 in Opal's book and read the middle paragraph. Quinn opens the book to the page and Opal appears. Daddy was up to his ears in debt. He'd been playing poker every Friday night with Ron Williams and other folks that just had it as bad as Daddy. I suppose Daddy thought he could give us all something if he returned, if, if he won a lot. But he lost a lot more than he won. And this would cause Mama and Daddy to share words in the living room, away from Will's birdies in my room. But they were so loud. We all three knew what was going on. I suppose this is why Will and Bertie didn't want to leave old Cana. They wanted to stay and help Mama and Daddy. <laughs> I don't know if Daddy is still gambling away, but I know he's still buying lottery tickets every week at Exxon right by the straight line. Opal disappears. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. I paid it all off. It might have taken me a while, but I paid it all every cent that we saved for retirement pff, gone told you that Bertie and i would help i ain't about to ask for money for my own children but i thought opal gave you money she offered it but what did i just say i don't take money then why did you say that you took it what you didn't say that in the book i think i would have remembered that one how much money i had heard from Another source that she had after the book was published. I'm not sure, but um, I'm sure it was a large amount. Amos, what? I told you I didn't. I didn't. You take gambled it. it, didn't you? How much was it, Daddy? Look here. Now you can't just believe this girl. She's trying <laughs> all this time, and we didn't think she would ever help us, and she did. You took it all. I didn't take it. I don't know how you think you know this, but I never took even a penny from any of my children. It's a blatant lie. Would you swear on the Bible that you didn't? Oh, for goodness sake, Dodie, I told you I didn't. That should be enough. Will, go get your Bible. Yes, ma'am. Wait. Daddy! She might have given me a little something. How much is a little to you, Amos? $20,000. Amos, how could you? How could I? How could I? How could anyone in this family live with themselves? We've done terrible things that have hurt the people we care about most. We shouldn't be proud people, but we are. We can't help that our pride gets in the way. I'm no better than anyone in this room. But daddy, that money could have helped everyone in this room. Helped us with what? Become better people? <laughs> yeah, right. That money could have gone to Harley. What do you think your son would have done with it? He could have gone to college. Harley doesn't want to go to college. He could have caught in a house or anything. He would have had the chance to make his life better. Harley is happy working here. We could have helped Connie get out. And she would have gone straight back to jail. She's better now. How would you know? You barely go to see her. It's hard, Bertie, something you wouldn't understand about me and a spouse or a partner since you're so good at leaving him for another man. All right, uh, maybe we should take a break. You know, I may be good at leaving my own husband, but at least my whole congregation didn't leave me. So what? We're, we're down a few members in the church, but with the Lord's help, we can... Oh, well, come on. Nobody is coming back because they're all afraid that you are going to take their money again. I didn't take their money. Uh, your wife sure did, though, and a whole lot of it. So Connie did embezzle the church's money. Yes. 
She did. And you didn't have a clue? Yeah, well, you didn't have a clue about it? Seems strange that it was going on in your own church and you didn't know. Connie was always in charge of the money, and I trusted her with it. All the things she bought, you didn't even raise an eyebrow. She had another job on top of the church. I, I figured she had gotten a raise or, or a, 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 a bonus. It would have bit you. All right, enough, Bertie. Why do you always take his side? He's no better than any of us. I never said I was, Bertie. I'm just saying I didn't have a clue that it was going on. That's not true. I beg your pardon? You called Opal, telling her all about it. That's how she knew to put it in the book. Well, that was when we all knew. It's when you found out, and just you. Is that true, son? What? No, no, of course not. It's a sin to lie, Will. Shut up, Bertie. Honey, why didn't you tell us? She, she's lying. How could you possibly know that information? The book. The book only says what Connie did and why she did it. Nothing was ever said about when it happened if I ever told her. So just how could you have known that? I have my sources. Oh, just who are these sources? You've been getting your information from someone else? No. Did you talk to Connie? What? No, no. I told Will I wouldn't as long as you all gave me an interview. Then how do you know all of- Opal's wife. What? Annie Wright? Well, I think she goes by your last name now, Annie <laughs> Bailey. You've been talking to Annie? I'm surprised you even know her name. Of course we know her. Annie agreed to talk to you. Just a little. Why would she talk to you? Do you think that she wanted to talk to any of you about it? How is Annie? She, she's, I mean, she's not good. She lost her wife. How do you think she feels? I always liked Annie. From the sounds of it, you were the only person who did, Bertie. Do you think that Opal's suicide had anything to do with you all not accepting who she was? I think we can all agree that there was more to it than that, sweetie. But you were outraged by it. Well, yeah. That's what she said in the book, wasn't it? We weren't outraged by it. It, it was... We... We were just out of heart about it. What does that mean? I think they mean to say that they're worried about where she's going. Where she's going? Oh... Like heaven or hell? Yes. I'm sorry. Wasn't Opal baptized? Well, just because you're baptized doesn't mean But she that... accepted Jesus Christ into her life. That's how it goes, right? And then all sin is forgiven? But you can't just be living in constant sin. I'm confused. They think Opal's in hell. Currently. Yep. Because she's a lesbian? And she killed herself. So that counts too. Awesome. So it would seem. Why would Annie talk to you? You aren't even a famous reporter. Now hold on. You all think she's in hell because she's gay and she killed herself. And you don't think that that had something to do with the reason that- My sister made her choices. And here, I thought you all thought of Opal as a god, shaping your lives and her image through her words. I'm sorry? Well, you and your family are the ones playing god. You are placing judgment on where she went after she died. And I thought that was up to God. Oh, it is. Then she's not in hell. Listen here. What we are given in the Bible, we go with. And you are willing to say that she's in hell because she was a lesbian and she killed herself? You are willing to say that about your own daughter? I don't want to think about it. I don't want to talk about this. We don't know where she is, but I think we all hope she'll be in heaven. Well, we do know where she is. Daddy, we aren't going to talk about this no more. You're upsetting Mama. Amos, leave it be. It says transgressions like those. Daddy, oh. stop it. Well, what do you think of Annie? Have you ever met her? I thought we were moving away from this subject. Does it bother you talking about your sister's partner? No. Well, yes. Well, why is that? She's always been funny. I told her mama that a long time ago. 
funny as in queer? Yes. What exactly did she do that made her funny? Well, she would all sometimes she tell her Doty. Tell her what? You're the one who dug yourself into the hole. Now get out of there yourself. You talk about it all the time, about how you wished you could have done something to change her. Now I can't wish anything for her, Amos. She's dead. Our daughter is dead. Mama, are you okay? I can't. I can't. Amos, you have this hatred in your heart for our girl. And I don't hate her. I feel sorry for her. Imagine what she was going through. Well, and Annie should have helped her through whatever she was going through. She always said she had Annie to take care of her. I don't think anyone could have helped her. You were the last to talk to her, weren't you, Will? You talked to Opal? I wasn't the last person to talk to her. Annie had to be. Annie was on set when it happened. You were the last person. How do you... Yes, I was the last person to talk to her. What did you tell her, Will? Nothing. That's a lie. All right, where are you getting your information from? What did you tell her, Will? I didn't tell her to kill herself, if that's what you're thinking. You told her this was all her fault. I didn't tell her to take her life. You blamed her for everything. Will, you didn't. Stop now, just wait a minute. Will, you never said you talked to her. Why would you talk to her? I missed her. I missed her, is that a crime? I would talk to her about everything. They are happy. She, she would, she, she was always such a good listener. You talked to her about everything? Everything. Right down to Connie and Beslin money from the church. Never thought I, I didn't think she would actually write the book. You gave it away? All our secrets? Well, Mama, I didn't know what she was going to do with it. Yeah, Will. This is all your fault. Would you just shut up, Bertie? Why didn't you tell us you were talking to her? Why? Were you planning on talking to Opal yourself so you could get more money out of her, Daddy? Will, Bailey, that is the rudest thing I've ever heard out of your mouth. Like, I'm sure you didn't try to talk to her into bailing out your wife. You know how many times I've tried to talk to her? She never even picked up. Shocker, probably got tired of you asking of hot single celebrities that you could flirt with. Mama, did you hear what Will said to me? Hush, Bertie. Will, now will you tell me right now how many times you called her? Then goes behind the counter and finds the baseball bat. She gets on top of the counter and raises the bat. Annie and Harley enter. Quinn begins smashing the cash register. Quinn Bailey, have you lost your mind? Annie? Did she just say your last name was Bailey? Hi, I'm Opal's daughter. Well, shit fire. Hi, cuz. End of Act One. Sidewalks in Cana by Pearl Moore. Act Two. Scene One. Lights up on Opal. Annie. Annie, honey. Come here by the window and look outside at Quinn. Our little honeybee has got all her stuffed animals and baby dolls all around her table. And now she's serving the tea to each one of them. Oh, oh, she's spilling it all over the table. And now she's lapping it up like a dog. It's oddly cute. God, who knew you could love something so much? Um, Annie, I was thinking, what if we brought Quinn to meet my parents and my siblings? You know, never mind. I don't know what I'm thinking. Oh my God. Annie, Annie, the paparazzi have gotten through the gate and they're, they're swarming Quinn. Light shift back inside the store to where we left off at the end of act one. Mom, what are you doing here? I've come here to get you from this place. And will you put down the bat, Quinn? Hand it over before you hurt yourself. Now, wait a minute. Wait, watch where you swing that thing. And look what you did to my cash register. Quinn lowers the bat, but every time she talks, she swings the bat. And they duck and flinch. 
Give him the bat, Quinn. I want answers. Well, I have a few questions myself. Come on, Quinn. Get down from there. Wait, wait. Are you even a reporter? A reporter? Um, I just wanted to talk to them. Quinn is not a reporter. She's a college student. A dropout is what she means. You're going back. No, I'm not. Why didn't you tell us you were Opal's kid? You don't look like her at all. Or any. That's because she was adopted. Did you not know she had a daughter? I thought Opal told them. They knew. It's just, we gave them limited information to protect you, Quinn. Just like how we do with the media. You never talked to us about the child you were raising. Even if we asked, we always had to find baby pictures from those magazines and tabloids. And it's not like Opal ever wanted to come back home. To what? A home filled with people who resented her? I'm sure that's what you told her. Quinn, grab your things. We are leaving. I'm staying. We didn't kill her if that's what you came here really to ask. We don't know that for sure. She did that to herself. It wasn't because of that. Well, I, I mean, it was, but I needed to figure things out for myself. Come on, Quinn. You, you don't have to leave so soon. I'm sure we could all talk it out. I agree with Harley. Let's all just take a breather. There is nothing to be worked out or talked about. It might be for the best. They just leave. She's your granddaughter. Don't you? I, I don't want to talk to her. I don't want to talk to Quinn. They never did. I'm staying. Over my dead body. I think that's a poor choice of words since she's the one swinging around a baseball bat. She's not going to hurt anyone. Well, she is a little crazy, so I don't I'm know what she's I'm not crazy. Playing. All right, you're not crazy. Jesus. Quit flinging that thing around. You're going to hurt someone. Quinn, this is ridiculous. Hit me. What? Will Bailey, this is not the time to test the Lord. Will jumps onto the counter with Quinn. Go on. Hit me. Anywhere you'd like. He's lost his mind. Go on. Swing. See? That's another piece of leverage for her. Isn't that right, Quinn? You were never going to hurt us, were you? You came to find out what happened to your mama. Well, I don't know, and I'm real sorry for what happened to her. I am. We all are. We might show it in different ways, but we're hurting too. Now I think it's a bit, now I think it's best you take your leave with your other mother. Will hops down from the counter and offers a hand for Quinn to jump down. Quinn hops down on her own without his help. Quinn lays the bat down on the counter. I was the one who found her. And I just... I never could understand why she could do something like that with me in the house. I was right there. She could have... I need a breather. I'm going outside for a bit. And he tries to follow her out. Don't. I just need a second to myself. Quinn exits. I can't believe she came here. You're paying to fix my cash register. <laughs> Dear Lord, Amos, is that all you can think about right now? Whatever, it's fine. I'll pay for it. No, you won't. Dodie, don't her worry about it. it. She just shattered her cash register. The least she can do is pay for it. We aren't taking her money. Annie, I'm, I'm so sorry about Opal. I'm tired, I'm jet lagged, and I don't have the energy to deal with you all right now. You know, you're not being entirely fair. She was our family, too. Harley, don't. I didn't know her. Maybe not like you or anyone else here, but she was blood. That counts for something. She was something to this family. Harley, was it? It's a sweet sentiment. But it doesn't really ring true for this family. Blood is dirt to them. I know you don't really care for us, Annie. But you have to see it from our perspective, too. She knew exactly what she was doing right in that book and knew how we'd react to it. I'm sorry, do none of you remember the first time Opal came here to introduce me to you all? It was like you all saw hell opening up under our feet, ready to swallow us whole. <laughs> well, it's not every day your daughter comes out to you by introducing her new fiance on the way to church on Sunday. She always had to make a grand entrance anytime she came back home. We already knew it was happening. She, 
She'd let the media know first, before her own family. She knew how you would react. You would have told her not to bring me here because you were embarrassed by your own daughter's sexuality. I didn't care that you were both lesbian lovers. Please don't call us that. Oh, uh, do you prefer lesbian partners? Yes, partners is fine. What am I doing? It doesn't matter. The point is that the rest of you didn't support us either. Opal always hoped you would change your mind. She should have changed her mind about the book. You know, I truly wish she didn't write it. Truly, I mean that. I think it caused her as much trouble as it caused all of you. You think she would still be here if he, she hadn't have written it? I don't know. But what's the use of wondering if she hadn't? She was in a place that even Quinn and I couldn't pull her out of. Well, maybe this was her grand plan, but to bring us all here together. If that were true, why isn't she here to do it herself? Annie exits. Lights up on Opal. She's reading from her book. Leaving home is always the hardest part of any journey. But mine was harder because I was leaving behind my family. A family who wasn't very supportive of my journey. They wanted me to stay home, find a good job, find a husband, settle down, and have some kids. The normal things. I was privileged enough to have a good mama and daddy, and a few good siblings too. Things seemed normal. It irked me how normal it all felt, and perhaps I was living the life they wanted me to have at home. But there were a few abnormal things in their eyes. I have a really good paying job now, and I make more money in a month than my family ever could. I have a wife now. I have an adopted daughter. Those parts of my life seem normal reading them off the page to you. But it all drives my family nuts. Scene two. Quinn sits outside on the porch of the store. Annie enters from the store door and sits down beside her. You never answered your phone. Well, there is a three hour difference from Virginia to California, you know. I was worried. You could have picked up once. I left you a voice message once. Yeah, and you were smart enough to not tell me where you were, which worried me even more. I'm an adult and I could take care of myself, Mom. You know, I was worried. Do you see a recurring pattern here? Your poor mom was worried when you said you wanted to drop out of school. I was worried when you didn't want to go to therapy. I was worried by how many times you were reading her book. I was worried when you decided to take up dog walking. And now I'm just plain concerned. That's all you do is worry about me. I get tired of it, mom. So what? I needed a little getaway trip. Some girls your age would have chosen to go to Palm Springs for a little getaway trip instead of going to the birthplace of your recently deceased mother. Did you just hear the words that came out of my mouth? You could have just stayed home. I would have been back eventually. It's not how being a mom works. Whatever. You know, I was doing a really good job of hiding my identity. Maybe I should take up acting. You're joking, right? I just wanted to see your reaction. <laughs> Journalism could still be my thing, though. As long as you don't join the paparazzi, I'm fine with that. How did you find out I was here? I had a hunch. And uh, using my credit card for the ticket here, the hotel room, and the rental car wasn't your most clever idea. Oh. Whoops. If it helps, the room service is terrible. <laughs> you poor thing. <laughs> no. She would have gotten a good laugh at you doing something like this and scaring me half to death. I'm doing all of this for her. And you. Are you? What do you mean? Seems like you're doing it for yourself. Well, is there something wrong with doing something for myself? Well, I don't need them to tell me things I already know. And you don't either. They know her, Mom. They don't know her. Not like you or I do. They know a part of her that I'm trying to piece together. Your mom refused to talk to them about you. Did you know that? She made sure to set boundaries I think if she thought if she hid you from them, they couldn't hurt you like they hurt her. They haven't hurt me. 
And it's not like it's just them that you both hid me from. It was everyone. The press, the news, or whatever. I couldn't even go anywhere when I was younger because they'd be there. We tried to keep you from that spotlight, and I think we did a pretty good job of it. You don't even know who I am because of your decision. You know, when I got here, I snuck around the counter to see the pictures they had up. I had wondered if they knew what I looked like now. They had one picture, and it was from when I was eight years old, and the paparazzi had swarmed me while I was on the plane in the backyard. You remember that time? That was the only picture they had of me, and it's not even a real picture of me. So you're upset with me and your mom because we only wanted to protect you? No, no. I'm upset because I'm confused about everything. What do you mean? Who was she? Did I really know her? Quinn, she was your mom. I know that, but listening to them and what they think of her... It's different from what we know of her. I just need them. You really don't, Quinn. Honeybee, there were many reasons that your mom and I didn't want you coming here and meeting them. Your mom went through a lot to get where she was, and it was no thanks to her family. It was her own hard work and determination that led her to her career, to meeting me, to having you in our lives. You said it yourself. You think they're the reason she did it. I was angry, Quinn. We don't know. We don't know what she was thinking. She didn't leave a note or anything. She left a book, though. Quinn, it's what she wanted to do. She thought she would get a lot off her chest that way. I can't keep living like this. I need to know. I need them to tell me. I need them to say it. Wait, what, Quinn? That it's their fault she's dead. Honeybee, you aren't going to find that closure here. Let's just go back home. I can't go back. I can't go back to that house. Not when... I can't. I want to stay. I want to hear them say it. You have until this afternoon to figure it out. What? Tomorrow morning our flight leaves and we are going whether you like it or not. You can't make me. There's not a lot of press here now, but when they hear that Opal's wife and daughter are here, they will be swarming this place again. You wouldn't. I would, because I'd do anything for you. I love you. Coming home, I suggest you do what you need to do and ask what you really want to know. Mom, why couldn't you just leave me myself to do this myself? I'm fine. I can't lose anyone else, Quinn. Harley enters. Sorry, I couldn't stand it in there anymore. It's fine. We're done talking. Right. Annie exits back inside the store. She seems to really hate you being here. She's what you would call a worrywart. My mom was like that, too. Even in prison? Yeah. I mean, it's worse now that she's in prison. She doesn't really know what's going on. I don't really like going to see her. It's hard, but you get it. My mom isn't in prison. Yeah, I know. That's not what I meant. Never mind. I wanted to apologize. For what? Hitting on you when you first got here. You're forgiven. <laughs> that would have been weird, right? With us being the cousins and all. Yeah. <laughs> Super gross. Harley, was there something you came out here to talk about besides the 0% chance of something ever happening between us? Right. I just needed to get out of there. It's that bad in there? There are a bunch of chickens with their heads cut off. You shook them up pretty bad. They feel like they're on trial with you. And they should be. From what I hear, your mama wasn't perfect. Well, neither was yours. Yeah, I mean, she stole a lot of money, a lot of it. And you're right, she's not perfect. I never asked her to be perfect, but... Opal drank a lot, and she had a drug problem. Oh, so you listen to the tabloids? No. I listen to what my dad tells oh, God, me. God, I don't know what is worse. Your dad talking about my mom or those trashy tabloids. What I'm trying to say is, I don't know your mom. And you don't know my mom. Why did she do it? I mean, why did your mom embezzle all that money from the church? Well, that's like me asking why your mom killed herself. Jesus Christ, no, it's not. Well, I don't know why she did it. She liked money and she never really had it growing up. See, there's your answer. 
I still don't know why she did it to us. Of course she was going to get caught, but why didn't she think of me and my dad? I don't know, Harley. What do you miss most about your mama? I miss how I could hug her at any moment and I didn't need a reason for it. What do you miss about your mom? Her biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> Dad can't cook at all, so we eat out a lot. I miss her food. It's not fair, is it? No, it's not. In scene three. Inside the store, Amos, Doty, Will, and Birdie are still arguing. She's your granddaughter and you just want her to leave? We've played her little game long enough. It's time for her to leave. You're just afraid of what she's going to ask. She's looking for something she can't find here. I think she just lost. So you're going to take her side? She lost her mama. She is going through the same pain. That the same pain? I lost my daughter, Birdie. I lost a child. I want to die before I see any of you die. I, I, wanna, I want y'all to be as old as Methuselah. I want y'all to live your lives, to, to watch you grow. I never wanted this for Opal. I never wanted to watch her get hurt. Annie enters. Hello again. I thought you didn't want to talk to us. I don't. But Quinn wants to ask you a few more questions and she needs to pack up her things. She'll be in in a second. How are you handling things, Annie? I lost my best friend. How's your divorce been? Hey, she was just asking a question. Will, it, it's okay. Clarence is a real nice fella. He's the one I had the affair with. Yes, I remember your chapter in the book. It was a rather short chapter. I think a short chapter is a blessing in disguise. How about you, Will? How's your wife? She's fine. Amos, Dodie, you've both been rather quiet. I was just trying to tell Will and Birdie what it feels like to lose a child. And you think that makes up for all the things you've done to Opal? She told me about you all long before the book, long before I even met you. You didn't want her to dream. You wanted her to be stuck here. And what's so wrong with being stuck here? Tell me, please. Opal loved her home. The Opal I knew loved everything about Cana, Virginia. It was when she took off that she forgot what this place is really like and forgot all the good things about it. There's nothing wrong with the folks here that are like us that want to be stuck here. It's a community. It's not a town or a suburb or a, or a big city. It's home. And I won't have you or your daughter coming in thinking this place ain't worth anything because it is. You may not like us, which is fine and dandy by me, but you can't go hating the whole community. There was nothing here for her, Dodie. There could have been something for her. Like what? Just because her dreams were different than yours don't make them any less important. But her dreams got her killed. Amos! If, if she were here, if she would have stayed, then maybe she'd still be alive. We don't know that for sure. Maybe. But she wouldn't have been happy. Doesn't sound like she was happy at all with you. Daddy, don't. Say. I'm sorry? Well, she killed herself on your watch. I had no idea that- Couldn't you tell that something was wrong with her? I will not be blamed for Opal's suicide. She had a lot of things going on in her life that contributed to her death. She was always worried about what people thought of her, what you all thought of her, what, what Quinn, myself, and the media thought of her. She never put herself first. Harley and Quinn enter. Are you ready to leave, Quinn? She was an addict, wasn't she? She never touched drugs in her life. I don't know about that. I'm sorry. 
She used to smoke a lot. No, no, she didn't. Listen, I know because Opal and I would go to Teddy Gwynn's barn and smoke with him and his friends. Bertie and Bailey, you didn't. Remember that night that Opal and I said that we were staying the night at Hannah Towell's place? Yes. Well, we did go to Hannah's to get her so she could come too. Why? I never. That wasn't in the book. She and I swore that it would only be between us and the gatekeeper. How come I wasn't invited? Well, you would have ratted us out. You were their golden boy. <laughs> that I can believe. Harley. Dad, it's not like you're known for being laid back. You still call, call marijuana wacky weed. Okay, so she smoked a little. So what? It's legal where we're from. But she's still drinking heavily. She'd have a glass or two each night. Yes. Yes, she was. Was she an alcoholic? No, it wasn't that bad. What made her drink so much? She didn't drink that much. When she didn't share everything with you. It's a lie. All of it. It has to be. She didn't do those things. She was happy. Maybe that's what your mom wanted you to think. Why would she do that? When she loved you. And she knew how much you loved her. And she never wanted to share something that would concern you about what she was doing. Why didn't she put it in the book? Why didn't she tell her story? Because she wanted to tell theirs first. It wasn't her story to tell. She listened to you all for far too long. She was tired of listening and tired of never being heard. She was heard all the time on the news, her fans. All that was a persona. All of it was a, pr a price she had to pay to get where she was in her career. Oh, it reeks. It reeks of privilege. The rich kind. She could do whatever she wanted and get away with anything without a slap on the wrist. You're jealous, aren't you, Amos? Jealous that your daughter got all the fame and glory and money? Because let's be honest, that's all you're after. That's what you all think, isn't it? Hollywood thinks we're nothing but dirt under your fingernails. You look at us and expect that we're trash. We, that we don't have a dollar to our name. You expect that we're uneducated and that we're uncivilized. You wanna know something? The truth of the matter? Amos lost all our money to gambling. Will has a wife that's in jail because of embezzlement. Bertie got out of a nasty divorce. And me, I spread rumors. Now, you go a hundred miles or a thousand miles up the road, <laughs> and you will find the you will find the same family is out there doing what we did. The only thing that's different is that we got caught red-handed by our own daughter, too. We we don't want a penny from you or your daughter or the fame, or the glory. We just want our name back, our reputation back. I want my mom back. Looks like nobody's getting what they want. Oh, I came here for my daughter. I didn't come here looking for an argument. You're looking for someone to pin the blame on. Both of you are. I never said that. But, but you want to? Her passing came as a surprise to me, and every time I keep looking into it, I can't help but thinking about what your family and what your family did to her. You don't think it was the fame? There are many alive and famous people out there living their lives. You deal with it. I thought Opal and I had each other to deal with that stress. Oh, apparently not. You don't get to say one word about it. When? Didn't you say you were there when it happened? Yeah. What was she like before she, you know? She was in her room and she was talking to Will. I told you I didn't say anything. You said something to her. I heard her cry. We're brother and sister. We were arguing. I'm sure we both said things we weren't too proud of. That was different and you know it. Will, honey, whatever you said, I'm sure it wasn't your fault. See? This is what I'm talking about. He could go and rob a bank and come back to mama and daddy with open arms and no repercussions. Technically speaking, his wife was the one to rob the church, but... We, we've gone over this already, Bertie. It was a mistake, something my family would never be able to take back. Do you feel that way about the phone call you had with my mom? You never stop asking questions, do you? No, she does not. Tell me what happened. 
you know, I thought when I talked to her that, that everything would stay between us. I was so angry at that book she wrote. Scandal after scandal with no reservations or concerns about how it would change everything. Change everything in our family. In a small town, there's already so much talk that goes on, but it was like Opal set a ticking time bomb off. And then all of a sudden, I'm watching my wife get towed away by the cops with my neighbors and my son watching it all. And then having to go up in front of God and everyone in my church and continue preaching as if nothing happened. I had every right to be mad at her. So I admit, I let her have it and I chewed her out. I told her she was selfish. How dare she tell such stories, secrets, really, that weren't hers to tell. It was like she was selling us to the tabloids doing the exact thing that she hated about being famous. I told her the way she wrote it felt like she didn't care about us at all. Just another paycheck to her millions. Even so, Harley told me that you always thought she was on drugs or drinking or whatever. If you thought she was that unstable already, why would you attack her like that? Well, I thought I'd wake her up. I didn't. From the sounds of it, you made it much worse. When I know you're hurting, but my dad isn't the one. Then whose fault is it? It's not my mom's or your family. Our family. Come on, Harley. I'm not even blood related. That don't matter. At least not to me. What happened that day when you found... Harley, don't. No, no. I tried. I tried checking on her. The door was locked. I remember I tried breaking into her room. Her sobs were so loud. It was like she was having a panic attack or something. I just wanted to help her. The sobs got quieter and I, I could still hear her breathing. I knocked on the door. Opal enters. Quinn, Quinn's a part of this moment now. There's a door between them. Yes. Mom, are, are you okay? Yeah. Yes. I'm sorry, Quinn. For what? Scaring you. I didn't mean to. I, I just, uh, just got off the phone. With my brother. Is everything okay? Yeah. Yeah. It's fine. I mean, no. It, it will be, though. Is it about the book? It always is. She tries to open the door. It's locked. Can I come in? No. No. No, I, I just don't want you to see me like this. I don't care. Quinn. I don't care. Please, let me in. I can help. Quinn. I'll tell you what. Why, why don't you go make us some biscuits? You remember how I taught you, right? Yeah, of course. Good. Because I'm craving them and you make them almost as good as your nanny did. Really? Really. Now go. Should I bring them back up here when they're done? No. Well, we could eat them in your room and watch a movie. No, Quinn. I don't want crumbs in my bed like last time. <sighs> okay. <laughs> uh, will you be down to get some? I'll get some soon. All right. Are you sure you're okay? Don't worry about me, Quinn. Go on. I love you. Opal disappears. I made them and I gave her time to come and get them. Usually she likes them when they first come out of the oven. She never came back down. This isn't healthy for you, Quinn. You're just saying that because you don't want to hear about it. That's not true. It is, though. I hate seeing you go through this, Quinn. I want to talk about it with someone. And I promise we will. We'll, we'll get it through it together. Don't you get it? I can't live in that house. Knowing what happened and you just want to send me to therapy. But you never want to talk about it. You just send me off thinking I'll magically be happy again. A honeybee. I never meant to smell, I never meant to make you feel that way. I thought I was helping by sending you all those places. Why didn't you just ask me what I wanted? 
it, it's hard for me, Quinn. She wasn't just my best friend or your mom. She was the person I thought I would spend the rest of my life with and suddenly that's gone in an instant and it's hard to know what to do with yourself. It's hard to trust your emotions to deal with the pain and I, I thought a professional would help deal with that pain. Maybe this is how I deal with it. I need to be here in order to feel better, to feel closer to her. And do you want to deny me of that? No, Quinn. I want you to be happy, but you are sinking here in this obsession. Oh, it's not an obsession. I just want to know how I could have changed the outcome. Quinn, you don't think this is your fault, do you? You wouldn't look at me for so long. I thought that maybe, maybe you were mad at me. I would have just broken open the door and stopped her. Didn't stop. But maybe she, if she would have just seen my face, maybe that would have been enough. Quinn, stop. This wasn't your fault. It never could have been your fault. Do you understand? I'm sorry. When it all happened, all I could see when I looked at you was her. You have so much of her spirit in you. Then you can understand why I came here. You wanted answers. I wanted a part of her that I never got to meet. That's a complicated part of her. Quinn looks at each member of the, ba of the Bailey family. Yeah, I can see that. But it's a part that you fell in love with anyway. And now I can too. Got me there. Can we stay? We have an early flight to catch tomorrow, you know? Okay. I guess this gives me time to say goodbye, at least. But Quinn, uh, I need to tell you something. Curly, I swear if you say you're in love with me, I'm going to puke. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, gross. Trust me, with your personality, somebody's gonna have a lot of time on their hands and it ain't gonna be me. <laughs> Great talk. I, I gotta go, Harley. Now, hold on. I, I was getting to my point. When you leave here, don't be a stranger. Come back and see us. Ooh, or we could come and visit you. Oh, that's a scary thought. Um, don't. <laughs> Thank you. I didn't mean to blame anyone for what happened to my mom. I just wanted to get to know her. Amos gets up and exits back into the store out of sight. Great. Well. Don't think badly, Amos. Please. I think he just has his own battles to fight that he has to face with all of this. I know what the book says about us, but uh, she did put good things in it. <laughs> Yeah, she did. Like like the one time y'all left Birdie behind at the farmer's market. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I'd consider that a good story, Will. Uh, how about the one where you peed the bed at church camp? I don't think we need to share all the good stories. I think you all loved her. I hope you all did. Amos returns with something in his hands. No matter what any of your children do, you still love it. I know how I've acted and what I've said, and I'll stand by it today. You aren't over, but I think you really came to get to know her better than you thought you did. Even if I don't understand Opal or you or Annie, I guess you're still family. Here. Amos hands her something wrapped in waxed parchment paper. Quinn unwraps the waxed parchment paper to discover a bologna sandwich. I thought you didn't serve bologna sandwiches after the book. They were her favorite thing in this store. I couldn't bear getting rid of it completely. I made it just the way she liked it. Thank you. Harley's right. Don't be a stranger. Amos sticks out his hand for a handshake from her. Quinn takes his hand, but she pulls him into a hug. Lights up on Opal. She's holding her book. 
And here it is, in all its glory, <laughs> my autobiographical novel. It's just a memoir full of family secrets that I'm bound to get in trouble with. It's called Sidewalks in Cana. It's kind of a funny title, I know. See, there are no sidewalks in Cana. So why the title? Well, inside here, I'll tell you a little story about me growing up. The next town, Mount Airy, had sidewalks, and I always thought Cana was pretty enough and good enough to have their own as well. Ever since then, I've made it my duty in life, metaphorically speaking, to put sidewalks in Cana. A goal in my life, a sign I'd know I achieved my dreams. It's special to me and the people in it. I hope you like it. I wanted to share a little piece of me, a little piece of home. End of play.